continue on the uh, GameStop journey here. Look at 2007 through 2009. Um, pretty interesting stuff in this one. So this is the uh, weekly chart for the 2007 GameStop uh, chart uh, enclosed in this little square here. You can see they had a pretty nice uh, bull run that year and uh, finished out the year just about you know 20% down or so from where uh, the high was of $54.59. So in January 4th, 2007, GameStop holiday sales, of course, top estimates. Uh, they were up 23.9%. Gears of War, oh God. Oh, that, man, that brings back uh, memories. Gears of War. I played MLG for that game, baby. Wall bounce all day. Anyways, best-selling game at the time. Uh, rumor, GameStop Corporation to absorb Rhino Games. Um, this also came out on the same day. So as you can see, very, very bullish signals for GameStop to start the year. Now, and further, um, just over a month later, GameStop stockholders approved the share conversion from Class B um, shares, which we, we saw in... Uh, previous video going over this, that once GameStop was incorporated into the UTP plan, the unlisted trading privileges plan, we saw GME.B as one of the uh, securities listed. So as of Feb 7th, 2007, class B shares will no longer trade on the New York Stock Exchange. Then to top that off, uh, a week after that, they had a two for one stock split, which basically uh, doubled their float size or their shares outstanding. So they went from, I think it was 76 million to 150 million. Um, and it was done in the form of a dividend, which is pretty, <clears throat> pretty sick. I don't think the shorts could have uh, gotten their hands on it, but I'm not sure. I'll have to look more into that. Now, uh, as of March 21st, we have 87,083 shares that failed to deliver. And you can see that the bull run continued throughout the year in 2007. So on May 22nd, the rumor that was discussed about uh, Rhino being absorbed by GameStop actually was true. At that time, on June 4th, a little bit after that, we had the highest FTD amount that we've seen since FTDs first started reporting on GameStop, and that would be $1.15 million. And then on top of that, uh, they spent the rest of the year basically opening up stores worldwide. They expanded from 1,000 stores to over or to 5,000 stores in just a span of four months. That's pretty crazy. So moving on um, later on in the year, like the very tail end of 2007, GameStop is to take the place of newspaper publisher Dow Jones and Company in the Standard & Poor 500 Financial Index. So they uh, took the spot of Dow Jones and Company in the S&P 500. Now, if you remember, Dow Jones and Company was absorbed by News Corp, which, you know, if you if you follow the uh, follow the money, turns into Market Watch. So I actually made a video on that a while back. So it's funny how this is all tying together in weird ways. Um, basically, the company has gone through a number of names and ownership configurations, but it is still essentially a chain that hires serious game enthusiasts to sell new and used software from relatively bare bones stores. So some negative uh, opinions start to forming on GameStop. Um, because you can see headlines like this come out at the very end of the year. Once broke, GameStop moves up to S&P 500. So a little bit of negativity surrounding that headline. So this is 2008. Uh, you can see it was basically the opposite effect of uh, the previous year. We all know what happened in 2008. Not a good year for anybody, really. But then we, we look at the headlines. And beginning of the year, we see things like GameStop stops selling the Zune. Uh, we see in July that... Uh, um, Basically, this article was put out that's saying, you know, are video games recession resistant? City seems to think so, and is predicting 70% returns for GameStop. Now, remember, City is Citigroup, which was previously Salomon Brothers that changed their name once they merged together um, in, in their division of the Citigroup. They changed their division away from uh, Salomon to get rid of the bad reputation that they had created for themselves based on the bond scandal in the late 90s. So... Basically, the underwriter of GameStop is still here um, reporting on GameStop, involved with GameStop, because Citigroup is the underwriter, formerly Solomon Barney. So then we see in the same article that E3 is expected to be a catalyst for GameStop, and it will be held from <laughs> July 4th to July 17th. And it, was, it says E3 uh, will set the tone for immediate future and should support our view that the title slate is robust. So again, remember... Even back then, no date supplied. 
they roped in retail with all these uh you know headlines and uh catalyst narratives and then if you look at the chart you had about you know a week or so of a slight bounce during that time and then it just tanked after that so likely shorted uh not 100 percent sure that that's 100 percent speculation so the moas wait a minute so remember 2008 we had the volkswagen short squeeze well funny enough in this article that came out you know in 2008 they actually had dubbed that as the mother of all short squeezes so we need to think of a new name i'm, I'm thinking doe ass maybe i don't know but uh yeah mother of all short squeezes as one analyst phrased it led to an investor outcry alleging that they were duped by porsche no 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 you just got caught with the bag. Now, dealers said those traders who had sold borrowed Volkswagen shares in the hope of buying them back at a lower price had been panicked by the announcement of Porsche's holding. I bet. Now, it's funny because at the same time, shares in Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and uh, Societe Generale all tumbled on the same day, with traders saying there was speculation that the banks might be caught on the wrong side of the trades involving Volkswagen. You think? I think that's exactly what happened so then you look at the uh counterfeiting of shares report that came out during the whole financial crisis era as well and uh of course salomon brothers formerly uh Sal salomon brothers is on here citigroup global markets and you can see that the top 50 holders of fannie mae and freddie mac citigroup was one of them and they were pretty much uh talking about in this article the counterfeiting of shares of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the two entities that were involved in the housing crisis. I will link this article below so you can go ahead and take a look. Now, this is a really cool read. I'm not going to go over this too much to save you some time, but this is a really cool paper. It's a college paper that was done in 2008 in October, uh, right around this time. And it's basically college students that go and they pick different stocks and they actually chose GameStop and they give you a lot of interesting reasons why. This is actually a stock market simulation exercise done in college. Um, it gives you some cool history on GameStop. Uh, basically, you know, I, I didn't know this, but Funko Land plus Neostar is basically GameStop. That's the history. And don't forget, this is the Volkswagen squeeze chart. <laughs> um, the MOAS, apparently. So the last effort to drop their stock after, uh, you know, it, let, let's pretend this is May, right? This is our May run. Then we had this awful June. And th the lowest they could get it, from about, you know, it looks like about 420 <laughs> is down to 210. So that was their floor. And then we all know what happened the next day. So anywho, I think that's where we're going to look at next is the, uh, you know, the effects of the Volkswagen squeeze and the uh, overall crisis. And um, yep, I'll bring you the next one uh, as soon as I get it done. Y'all have a good one.